talking with Rob Fraley, the CTO of Monsanto. Rob, you told the journalists about two major scientific advances. One was plant-based and the other one was um, technology on the farms. Tell us how the genetic mapping of plants makes a difference in agriculture. So, uh, so you know, it's so exciting to, to, to be in a period where, you know, we're seeing, you know, all the advances in biology and all the advances in data science coming together. Uh, and these tools are really, you know, creating, you know, new product, new science for, you know, farmers not only in the U.S. but, but around the, uh, the world. You know, the, the advances in biology, you know, we now have the ability and, you know, as we've sequenced all of the genes and in crops, uh, you know, our breeders now have maps so that when they're crossing to create the, the next generation new product, they're literally breeding gene by gene. And, and that gives them an incredible ability to, to breed better, to breed more precisely, to produce, you know, higher yields or, you know, better disease resistance or better taste and better quality. And now the, the data science tools are, are being developed to give farmers, you know, you know, the ability to make better decisions using satellite imagery, using drones, using sensors in the field, on the equipment. So, you know, I, I always describe it as, you know, the, the two greatest scientific advance, advances of our lifetime, you know, the advances in biology, the advances in data science are coming together to, to change and enhance farming all around the world. So, what, what a cool time to be in ag. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about Roundup, mm -hmm. a major scientific advance that now is under fire. So how do you square the scientific advances with the fears of carcinogens? Uh, great question and really an important one. So, you know, we were disappointed to see uh, to see uh, IARC, which is, you know, one of the one of the groups in WHO. IARC is a, is an organization that that uh, that has uh, responsibility for cancer assignments. Uh, but they don't have the regulatory authority and the uh, and the depth of understanding of a lot of these uh, of a lot of the folks who really have the responsibilities. So uh, we were disappointed by the outcome. Uh, you know, I just tweeted the other day that, you know, what do things like grapefruit juice and coffee and cinnamon all have in common? You know, they've all been, you know, listed by IARC as being potential carcinogens. Don't believe it. I mean, um, you know, Roundup is, was discovered in the 1970s. Uh, it's been through exhaustive review in this country by the EPA, in Europe, by the established regulatory bodies of EFSA, in Canada, in Japan, all of these agencies who've studied these products in depth for years, and, and many of which are, are just being released today, disagree with the IARC result, and it's very clear that, uh, that Roundup is not a carcinogen, and uh, you know, we're gonna work hard to, uh, to reverse the, uh, the IARC ruling, because it's just, it's not based in science, and it's just not right. Um, you said demand for food will double by 2050. What plants or grains do you see picking up the slack there? Playing the largest role. Well, when when I th you know look at the projections, so you know as I talked about, it's the combination of world population increasing to 10 billion, but also the fact that world wealth will increase, and across Asia and Africa, three billion people will join the middle class. And you know, so between now and 2050, you know, you know only 35 years from now, the demand for food will double. There's two things we're going to need to do. We're going to need to farm more efficiently, and we're going to have to reduce food waste. Both of those will be important. As we look across the the globe, uh, you know, the demand for meat will increase, that, and that means that you know crops like corn and wheat will be important. The the bread products and rice, the fresh fruits and vegetables. You know, we we believe that if you know we need to achieve food security for the planet, uh, we'll have to double. You know production yields across the Americas. We'll have to triple or quadruple, you know, you know, production in Asia and Africa. And, and the good news is we have the tools and the science to do that. In fact, you know, I mentioned that, you know, as I look at it and as scientists are modeling this, you know, if we use these tools wisely and smartly to, to drive, you know, productivity and, and farm more intensely but more sustainably, we can not only meet the food security needs of the planet, but I think by 2050, we'll farm using less land because we'll be able to farm smarter and more intensively and more sustainably. And that would be a great win for, for the environment. If we could take out two to three hundred million acres across the globe of marginal land that probably should not be used in farming because of water or erosion concerns, you know, it would be a win to have both food security and a better environment. And that's one of the things that, you know, I'm really personally committed to and very excited about. Mm -hmm. Final question, what did you win the World Foods Food Prize for? 
Well, well, thanks. Uh, I, I, I was honored uh, with the World Food Prize along with two of my colleagues, Mark Van Montague and Mary Dale Chilton, for developing the techniques to, to create uh, and use biotechnology tools to improve crops. So, you know, we developed the methods for putting genes into plants that, you know, have created, uh, you know, products like Roundup Ready Soybean and uh, the, the corn rootworm products in corn or the insect protecting cotton. So basically the, the technologies that have allowed us to create, you know, the GMOs that have been so important for, you know, farmers in this country, but in the 30 countries around the world now that are using this technology. So, you know, it was exciting to be, uh, to be recognized for the science. And I think what, what made it particularly important for me, it was uh, an opportunity to, to really think globally and, and about the implications of agriculture. And then on a very personal note, uh, I was a close friend of Norm Borlaug in the, the 20 years before he passed away. And as you know, Norm Borlaug created the World Food Prize. And so it was really, it was really a, you know, for me, a, a very tight and emotional experience, you know, with someone who you know, has influenced me and served as a mentor for my career. So it, it made it extra special to, to be in Des Moines and, uh, and think about, uh, about Norm's legacy. Thank you.